Hi, I'm John Clear. Today I'm going to be reviewing a roll of Cinestill BWXX, also known as Eastman Kodak Motion Picture Film Double X 5222, which is a, very much a mouthful. You can see me struggling here to open the film can, which for some reason they closed very tightly. Uh, that's a very tight fitting lid. And also I learned today that loading film in front of a camera upside down is not a skill that I have. So please ignore everything that's happening on the screen right now. It's very clumsy. I am very excited to shoot this film. Uh, some very classic movies have been shot on this. Uh, Raging Bull, Schindler's List, Casino Royale, Kill Bill Volume 2, just a classic film. Uh, it's been around for decades and decades. I've heard some very interesting things about it. I'm excited to shoot it. I would like to thank Cinestill for sending me this film. I won a contest on their Instagram page. They sent it over for free. There was no expectation that I review it. They actually have no idea that I'm doing this, but there's such little information about the film out there that I thought it would be appropriate to share my thoughts on it. So I am loading this on election day 2020. I'm gonna go around to some of the polling locations, take pictures of people voting, uh, and if I don't finish the roll, then I'll shoot some other things. But anyway, without any further ado, let's go take some photos. All right, so let's talk about the results we got. I think they were very interesting. And uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get into it in a second. Uh, real quick, what I'm doing here is pre-washing the film. That is a very controversial thing. I've had people get into arguments with me about this for no reason. Uh, I, I don't know why it's so controversial, but for some reason people are very opposed or very much a fan of pre-washing film. I am very much a fan, so I, I tend to pre-wash. I shoot, uh, I shoot Tri-X, uh, Kodak Tri-X every day. I love that film, but the thing is it has this really weird purple uh, film base to it, and it's kind of yucky. Like, it, like it makes it harder to scan the film, it, it reduces your contrast. I, I just don't like it. I like pre-washing the film. It gets rid of all the purple color on, you know, the cast on the film. And Anyway, I wanted to experiment because I thought if I pre-wash this film, I, I bet it would come out clear, you know, like nothing would come with it. And sure enough, it did. Now, the reason for that is because this film, uh, like all Cinestill film, no longer has a film base. Uh, or it has the film base, but it, it, no, it no longer has the uh, anti-halation backing, also called Remjet. Now, Remjet is very complicated. I encourage you to look it up if you're interested ever in shooting movie film. But long story short, it prevents things like halation, which can be an interesting effect, but not if you're shooting a movie. And uh, it also is helpful. It, it, it prevents uh, it prevents friction and things like that when you're running film through a camera really, really fast, like you do in a motion picture camera. Uh, remember, this is a motion picture film. So 
It's not necessarily designed to be used in uh, stills cameras, but we'll talk about that in a second. But anyway, I, I wanted to see if, if any, uh, you know, film, uh, you know, anti-halation coating or any, any type of coating was still on it. And sure enough, the water came out clear. So uh, yes, that I can confirm that is very much removed uh, by Cinestill. So uh, actually, going back to the point I just made, I I think it's important to understand that this is not a, f a film made for stills photography. This is a film specifically made to be exposed at roughly you know one fiftieth of a second. It's made for very specific lighting conditions. Uh, you know the ISO of it changes based on what color temperature you're in. So uh, if you're shooting in daylight, it's ISO 250. If you're shooting in tungsten uh, color lighting, it's an ISO 200 film. This is definitely film, first of all, that is very old, right? Like it was designed a long time ago, but it is designed for a very specific use case. So putting it in a stills camera is an interesting thing to do, but it's not necessarily what it was designed to do. Now I wanted to show you guys, and don't worry, I'm not gonna. You know, it was like half an hour, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show you the whole, uh, you know, the whole developing here. But I think that it's important that I show you the developing step, and that way you can see what I did, what chemicals I used, and uh, and make your own decisions based on your workflow, whether or not this film might be a good fit for you. Because I think when you're reviewing a film, especially a black and white film, the developer that you use and the, and the techniques that you use to develop are just as important, I would argue, as the film that you chose, right? I mean, think about it. Uh, you know, th Think about the, the wild differences you can get with different chemicals. Uh, you can do things like stand developing. Uh, you know, let's just say that anyone who, you know, if, if you take one film photographer and you tell them to develop a black and white roll of film, and then you give that same roll of film to another photographer, they're going to develop it differently, and they're going to get a different look. So I am developing this with Kodak D76, that's what I like. Uh, I've used other developers, but I always come back to D76, probably because my favorite film is Kodak Tri-X, which really loves D76. Those two go together like bread and butter. Uh, I used a stop bath. Uh, everything, every chemical here is Kodak. Uh, Kodak stop bath, Kodak fixer. And then I used photo flow at the end. Uh, I would definitely re recommend if anyone out there is not using any type of uh, wedding agent for your film, definitely use that. Like it, it, it's a good thing to do, and it's very cheap. That bottle that you see there has lasted me uh, years. Uh, I think technically it's even expired, although I haven't seen any. Uh, you know, it still works. But anyway, that's how I developed the film. Uh, you can see how much I'm agita agitating it here. Uh, I'm going to speed up the the film here, and that way you don't have to sit through half an hour of developing. But I just wanted you guys to see it. So. As far as the results go, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really not a fan. I, I, I don't like, I, I think the best way to put how this film looks is to call it muddy. Now, maybe that's just the way I shot it and the way I developed it and the way I scanned it. Well, no, the negatives look kind of muddy too, a little bit, but, uh, I, I don't know. Like if you just look at those photos and, and I would encourage you to rewind if, if you uh, didn't see that when you were seeing the photos originally, but the there's just no real midtone information. The shadows are either muddy or completely black. There's there's really no in between. Um, surprisingly, the most detail I got was right between the midtones and the highlights, like that that small band of of light right there. Uh, but yeah, I mean if you look at it. There's really no mid-tone separation at all. That's one of the reasons why I love Tri-X so much. It is, it is mid-tone city. Uh, you get such a, a diversity of, of tones in when you shoot Tri-X and, you know, HP5 and films like that. And, and this film is somewhat related to Tri-X, so I, I kind of expected it to be a little bit better in that respect. But you look at uh, pictures like the, the window washer or, um, you know, other, other photos like one of the photos of the building or, uh, you know, one of the ones shot outside during election day, they're just very bland. And no amount of, uh, no amount of tones adjustment, no, no curves adjustment I can do in Photoshop, nothing I could do could save that. And by the time I was making photos, 
you know, by the time I was bringing the highlights or the, uh, sorry, the midtones to where I wanted them, I was blowing out the highlights and the shadows. So uh, honestly, there was really no winning with this film when I was editing it. I was actually fairly disappointed. Now, to be fair to the film, again, it's not designed to be used in stills cameras, but it's also not really designed for the lighting conditions that I was using it in. So, you know, I, th this is a very high contrast film. I mean, you go and look at films like Schindler's List, uh, Kill Bill, Casino Royale. Uh, d d actually, you know what? Stop this video. I can't show it for copyright reasons, but go watch the opening scene to Casino Royale. It was shot on double X, th this film. And it's very high contrast, and it looks so good. And I, I think that part of the problem here is that I was shooting it uh, election day, actually, and then uh, the next day when I was shooting it, were both pretty overcast. So it was very even lighting, which, you know, with a film like Tri-X or HB5 or, or whatever, it would work pretty well. But for some reason with this film, just the very mushy, kind of muddy mid-tones, it just looked flat. And there was, there was no amount of... I mean, to get any real... Uh, tonality, I would have had to start dodging and burning, and I really didn't want to do that in a review, and frankly, I don't like doing that anyway, I mean, I, I like I like it when I get it right in camera, and I think most people do too, I mean, it's not like I won't dodge and burn, but I don't know, I, I you know, that's one of the reasons why I like tri so much, you know, you can shoot a pretty bland scene, and somehow it's just going to pop, and this film does not have that. Now, if you're shooting in really sunny conditions, if you're shooting in very high contrast conditions, you know, I actually think this film would do pretty well. There were a couple shots I did, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, looking at uh, one of the shots of the building where half the building is in shadows and half the building is in highlights uh, or in, in the light. I, that actually looked pretty good. I, I like that shot. I think that if I had known that more going in, I probably would have shot more high contrast subjects and I think that in that context the film can really excel and if you think about it that's what the film is designed for it's designed for high contrast you know studio lighting and things like that I mean think about when it was designed I think correct me if I'm wrong someone in the comments but I think this film was actually designed originally in the 1950s and if you think about lighting on Hollywood sets from the 1950s and 60s it was pretty harsh lighting most of the time. And it was, you know, you had very bright lights and you had very dark shadows. And that was a cool look. And this film, I think, maybe contributed to that look in, in Hollywood more than I realized. You know, I used to think that was all lighting. But this is such a, a unique film. I, I, was, I was really taken away by how unique it is. Um, there is one thing that I think would prevent me from putting this in my camera bag. Actually, no, there are two things. Uh, I would be willing to look past these things if, uh, <laughs> if the, if, if I could use it in more lighting conditions than just high contrast, which by the way, some people love shooting in high contrast situations. And in that case, I, I might recommend this film, but for most people, I don't think I can recommend it. Uh, and that's for two reasons. One, the, the price. CineStill does a really cool thing with this film, and I'm really glad they make it. Uh, you know, of course, they, they don't manufacture the film itself. They just process it and, and repackage it. Uh, Kodak is, is the one who makes it. But they, they take off that Remjet layer. Uh, they make it easy to process. They put it in canisters. Uh, you know, it's, it's really cool, I think, what they do. But it costs on B&H right now ten dollars a roll and I, I mean even with Kodak's price hikes that's just that's just too much I, I can't I really can't justify spending ten dollars on a on a roll of film that I really only feel comfortable shooting in certain situations uh, and then the other reason why I would not necessarily keep this in my bag at all times is that it's not a sharp film at all and that's coming from someone who shoots Tri-X which is not, again, that's, that's not a sharp film at all. That's, that's a pretty grainy film. And this somehow is worse than that, which is silly, I think, because, you know, it's a 200-speed film. It really shouldn't... It, it should be finer grain than, than Tri-X, you know? And Tri-X, I think, is even an older film than this. 
But if you think about it in the context of what it's supposed to be, it actually starts to make sense. Uh, there are other people who have explained this better than, than I think I could, um, and I, I certainly wouldn't want to, uh, to plagiarize what they said. So if you're very curious about this, I would definitely recommend researching it more. There is a, a, a compelling and you know, technically important reason why this is not a sharp film. To make a long story short, uh, remember that if you're shooting this film in a movie camera, you're exposing you know, a frame uh, you know, 24 times per second. So the film doesn't actually need to be that sharp because the grain is always moving around. So, you know, it sounds weird and, and you'd have to, again, someone else should probably be the one to explain this, but uh, if the grain is always moving around, then you actually perceive more detail than appears in any one given frame because the detail is, you know, it, it wavers from frame to frame, but it's persistent enough in your vision that you pick up on it and you you see it, right? Again, I'm probably not explaining it very well, but uh, <laughs> you, just trust me. It, it makes sense for the film not to be super sharp uh, in uh, the context of using it in a motion picture camera, where you're exposing it very quickly and playing it back very quickly. But in stills photos, you know, you're you're, you're making prints of this. You're sharing you know, still photos online, and you really notice a lack of sharpness. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. One one picture in particular really disappointed me as far as sharpness goes, and that was the picture of the back of the mail truck. That was exposed, if I remember correctly, at f8. And you look and and I focused on the the back of the mail truck. Uh, you zoom in. You don't even have to zoom in, honestly. But you zoom in on that little sticker, the stand six feet back sticker, and it it's not sharp at all. Like. It's just, it's very soft and not in, not in a nice way. It's just soft and like, when I was scanning this film, I guess the, the best way to put it is when I was scanning this film, I kept having to rescan things because I thought that I was scanning it wrong. But no, I wasn't scanning it wrong. I, it's just not a sharp film at all. Um, and again, that's coming from someone who shoots Tri-X, which is very grainy. You know, it, it's a high accutance film de depending on how you develop it but it's very grainy right like triax is not what you use if you want sharpness and even that is significantly sharper than this film and not that sharpness is the most important part of an image but i mean i, I just feel like i couldn't make prints of anything i take on this film anything bigger than like five seven or five by seven you know or you know i, I don't think i'd even make an eight by ten it just it's soft you know, I'm not sure that I like it. Again, you know, it makes sense in the con. I'm not saying it's a bad film. It makes sense in the context of motion pictures. And, you know, some people, like, if you're just sharing on Facebook or Instagram or, or you know, maybe if you even like the softer look, I say go for it. You know, if you're shooting in high contrast situations or if for some reason you want <laughs> muddy looking photos and you're shooting in low contrast situations then yeah, this, this would be a nice film, but it just, it seems so muddy the way that I developed it. And again, I developed it in uh, Kodak D76. It was not diluted at all. It was a stock solution. And that's usually a pretty high contrast uh, combination with, with any film. Uh, stock D76 is, is fairly contrasty. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I can recommend this. And that's really sad because this is such a classic film, but it, it really gave me uh, pause, and it really made me realize how important it is to examine things in the context in which they are intended to be examined, right? So, you know, <laughs> any cinematographer would love to shoot with this film. Uh, but me, personally, I don't think I'll be putting it in my camera bag. And that's really sad, because it's a neat film. It's really neat, and I think Cinestill is doing a really cool thing. Uh, and, you know, again, I would definitely recommend that you at least try this film, because maybe you end up really liking it. You know, it doesn't hurt to shoot one roll. And, you know, if you're shooting either with a really contrasty lens or a really, uh, you know, if you regularly have uh, contrasty subjects, like you're doing architecture work or you're doing um, you know, street photography in the middle of the day, then this might be a very nice film for you. And I would definitely recommend that you try it. Uh, if Oh, also if you're doing studio work. If you're doing studio work and you can very finely control the lighting, I think it'd, it'd be interesting to try this film. 
I would recommend that you try it, honestly. I mean, even though I'm kind of dogging on it here, I think if you tried it, and if you, you know, you, you might like it or you might not like it, but, you know, I, either way, I think you should try it. Uh, it's such a unique film. It's not going to be around forever. I mean, they've been making it such a long time, but it's not like they make a bunch of black and white movies anymore, right? So, so yeah, try it, see how you like it. I'm not a fan, but that's because I, I shoot... Well, A, I shoot a lot of indoors, so a 200-speed film isn't necessarily for me. And I also like to shoot when it's overcast. So, I, oh, and I make big prints. So those three things right there, I think, disqualify this from being in my camera bag. Um, I have another roll of it, so I definitely will shoot that with these things in mind. But, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I really I went into this wanting to love it, and I respect it actually quite a bit more than I did when I started this but I don't love it, if that makes sense. You know, I, I think that it's a really neat film, but it's not for everybody. So anyway, <laughs> even though I was kind of dogging on it, uh, thank you, Cinestill, for sending it to me again. That was really neat uh, that I, you know, I won a contest on their Instagram page, and they sent me a couple rolls of film. Cinestill is such a great company. I love everything they do. Uh, you should definitely check them out if you haven't already. Shoot uh, some of their color negative film, which is... Uh, also repurposed motion picture film definitely go check that out that's some really fun stuff to shoot and also they have some neat products like uh they have a temperature controlled like a sous vide type thing for developing in c41 and e6 chemistry that requires higher temperatures you know th th they have some really neat stuff going on there so i hope you guys don't think that i'm i'm dogging on cinema still because i really i've loved them for you know quite some time now uh but anyway Thank you for watching this. This is quite a lengthy video and, and listening to my ramblings and watching me poorly develop film and poorly shoot film. But uh, anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I, you know, again, I'll be shooting more of this film because, you know, I have at least one more role that I'd, I'd like to shoot. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and got something out of it. And I would definitely recommend that you try this film, even if you end up not liking it. So anyway... I'm John Clear. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.